Way hey, what's happening here then? Um, uh, Low 11 Celsius, 52 degrees Fahrenheit overnight, which is going to be dry with broken cloud. Pollen count's moderate. It is expected to rise later today. Remember, we're the first with the pollen count each morning. Later today, though, small chance of drizzle at first, but long sunny periods in the late morning and afternoon with a high of 20 Celsius, 68 degrees Fahrenheit. The outlook for Sunday, warm with long sunny periods. Um, Monday's going to be much the same. Temperature now, 12 Celsius, 54 degrees Fahrenheit. Okie dokie, my old kill lovers. It's the Midnight Line on Beacon and WABC. And if you're wondering where the free-for-all is, we did that last night. Because tonight we're talking about the member of the Parachute Regiment who's been convicted of murdering a young joyrider in Belfast. A uh, colleague was guilty of attempted murder of another. The prosecution's case was, well, it was claimed that the soldiers made up a story to justify the shooting of the joyriders. Basically, the soldiers said, stop. The joyriders didn't. The joyriders went through an army checkpoint in a stolen car. They failed to stop. They were flagged down by a 17-man patrol and they were shot dead on the Upper Glen Road. Now, this was almost two years ago. The question you've got to ask yourself is, is it right to send the soldier to prison? Sure, you could argue on the one hand, well, they've done it, so I mean, you know. But you could argue that all the soldier was doing was his job. That he said, stop. They didn't stop. What's that? What? What is the soldier meant to do? Stop or else I'll, um, I'll, I'll get damn cross at you lot if you don't stop. What is the soldier meant to do? On the other hand, you could say that the soldier was in absolutely no danger and the rules of engagement in Northern Ireland, I think, well, I mean, if you served in Northern Ireland and you want to correct me on it, please do. But as far as I know, the rules of engagement are that you have to believe that either yourself or the public are in immediate danger before you open fire. Now, a car speeding away from you from a checkpoint poses absolutely no threat. So why open fire? I mean, this, this is not Yugoslavia. This is Great Britain. So why open fire? That's, the prosecution said exactly that, and the jury agreed and sent the para to jail for life. What do you reckon? Is it fair that he serves that sentence? 754-123 in Wolverhampton, 236-235 in Shrewsbury. And maybe what you'd like to do is compare that to this. Shotgun Dad. This was in uh, today's sun, unfortunately. Shotgun Dad takes one million off raiders. Hero Dad, Robert Myers, for six armed robbers to dump 1.2 million and Scarper when he went after them with a gun. Robert, 38, leapt into action after his daughter, Rebecca, saw the mass villains in a van on their land. Robert thought they were thieves out to steal the 50 horses in his stable, so he ran outside in his dressing gown, brandishing a replica 38 loaded with blanks. The robbers hijacked a security express van. Basically, what happened was uh, he opened fire with uh, blanks and also with a shotgun, and yet this guy is being hailed as a hero. The other guys... They've been sent to jail. 754-123 in Wolverhampton, 236-235 in Shrewsbury. We'll be back to the lines after these. Visit your local car food store for our fantastic offer. Beacon Radio. Midnight Line on Beacon and WABC. We're talking about the para who's been sent to jail. He's been sent to jail for life because he opened fire on some joyriders who busted through an army checkpoint in Northern Ireland. We're asking the question, is it right that he goes to jail for murder? 754 123 in Wolverhampton, 236 235 in Shrewsbury. On this line here, we've got Petrina. Good morning. Good morning, Ian. Good morning, Petrina. What a surprise. I thought you were going to talk about golf tonight. Golf? Well, you've had football, you've had cricket. I thought we were going to hear about the albatross, the eagle and the birdie tonight. No, I did actually consider, I was talking to somebody today and I thought that it may be fun, I'm not sure if we could get two hours out of it, but it may actually be fun to ask people how much they know about cricket. Like, if you, if you get bold or googly, do you have to go to the doctors? And why, why, do they, why do they rub the balls? I have no idea. 
getting a thrill of it. It's where they rub it that worries me. Yes, well, exactly. <laughs> there are all sorts of unanswered questions in cricket that I think we ought to answer one night. Well, I thought Comrade Michael and uh, what's it, Johnny Morris last night, they were giving us a good story on the cricket, and the night before it was the football. I thought, it's got to be golf tonight. No, it's even more boring than cricket. <laughs> anyway, about this uh, incident that uh, happened over in Ireland. Yes. Um, these lads must have been well aware that they were breaking the law going through that anyway. They were in danger. They knew they were when they attempted to go through the barricades uh, with the army there. They know the army are armed, so uh, they've got to realise they put themselves in danger. Uh, the army have got to protect where they are, and uh, when a car is charging at you and doesn't stop and goes through the barriers, that could be a bomb, couldn't it? They can't take the uh, risk of... Uh, them going through. But the thing is, it was moving away, wasn't it? Was it moving away? Oh, I thought it was going... Well, it, it must have crashed through the barriers and away, and then they opened fire. The bullets actually passed through the back of the car, and I believe it was the fourth shot that oh, was, was one realize. of the lethal ones. Well, it was still... But then, when, what are the army men to say? Are they meant to say, stop, or otherwise we get quite angry with you? Yeah, they, they've got to protect the, their barracks, is not they? You can't go... Uh, well, it, with, the, with the things with the IRA and that, you... I mean, they're using cars and vans for bombing and killing innocent people anyway. So these uh, kids, unfortunately, uh, they died in this, uh, their joyriding act went wrong. But there again, I'm sticking up for the army in this case. But as for the uh, one officer going into uh, prison over this, I don't agree with that. Discipline, uh, discipline over the actions they took to cover up some of the evidence, yes. But I think it was a bit over the top to uh, give him life in uh, prison. He was doing his job. But it was, but he was doing his job badly, wasn't he? He was doing his job badly, but I mean, uh, it's, any cost, sort of it's cost the life of a teenager. Yeah, but the teenagers have got to realise when they're going through where the army are, the the army is uh, armed. That they are going to have to face the consequences of being shot at. They were, must have been well aware of this, and they thought it was an extra thrill to go through this particular situation and unfortunately they got killed for, for this bit of fun that they thought they were going to have uh, teased in the army. But I'm sticking up for the army for this because uh, you just can't trust the IRA and that where they're going to use these vehicles. Uh, those kids as far as the army were concerned could have dropped a bomb somewhere and got a timer in the car to kill somebody so uh, they should have stopped when they were asked to. But the point is they didn't. They didn't, so unfortunately... Uh, so they, they, paid, they paid for it with their lives? They paid for it with their lives. It was uh, a tragic day for the family, but there again, that they must have been well aware that they were taking a risk when they went in where the army were armed anyway. So I've got uh, a certain amount of sympathy for the family losing the children, but there again, they shouldn't have been there, and they were well aware that these weren't toy guns that the army uh, were holding, that they got the real thing there and they knew they were taking a risk. So unfortunately, it was an unnecessary uh, joyriding act that went wrong, a bit of fun on the army, and it's backfired on the children as well. But the army is suffering for it. They've got a bad reputation over in Ireland anyway, and this is the type of thing the IRA and that like to feed on. But uh, we've got to consider uh, that that could have been a car that somebody else had planted a bomb in and gone to use those kids to uh, do some damage with. You know, like the kamikaze pilot sort of situation. You you don't know what's in people's minds when they're doing these things, and unfortunately... Was it unreasonable then to expect that soldier to guess what was in their minds? Yes, it was unreasonable for him to guess. As far as he was concerned, he was uh, the queen and country or protection of uh, the uh, army property, etc, etc. Was it, or was it just a case of, well, I'll have that away? No, I don't think it was that. They, I mean, look how they're being killed all over the place, the army, and that by the IRA. They've, they've got to take precautions. You can't just be lenient on certain situations. You've got to take uh, it on its merits. They thought that they were planted something or doing something wrong, that they uh, should have stopped. They didn't, and they opened fire. They were warned to stop, and they didn't. So, they so are, the, are the paras wrong, or are the rules of engagement wrong? The, the rules of engagement are wrong. Uh, 
in certain situations they do go over the top. You have seen police go over the top in certain riots and that. The army do go over the top in certain things. Look, we're the bloody army. You do what we say sort of thing. But it's in a situation like that where they'd been given a warning to stop and they failed to do so, they took the consequences as tragic as they were. But, uh, but I think they were a bit over the top that uh, sensing that uh, one um, bloke to the uh, life sentence that he had. Disciplinary action for, for all of them that covered up the evidence, yes. But not that, no. I mean, we, they've got to do a job. If uh, it's got to put the fear of God in anybody else in the army to react, that means innocent people could get killed as well, doesn't it? Because they're going to be frightened of going in in prison for a life sentence for actually killing somebody. Some of the innocents are a certain amount of wastage, unfortunately. So the army are going to be too scared? To uh, do anything, react on any uh, situation. If they, uh, like that one's gone in prison now, if another car goes dual riding along there, the IR think, hey, that's a bloody good idea, they won't shoot at the next lot, we'll put a couple of bombs in there, like, you know. So they've got to react to the situation as it is. Unfortunately. Okie dokie. Petrina, thanks for your points. Thanks for kicking off the subject. That's all right. So then. I just thought I'd get a bit of a football analogy. In. <laughs> yeah. was... At least it wasn't. I don't know what an albatross in, in golf is, but somebody has to tell me. It's a large <laughs> white bird that, <laughs> that, that is feared by sailors. I thought you've got to be doing golf tonight. You've done the, the uh, rest of the, the sports, and I thought it's got to be bloody golf or uh, what's the other one? Rugby? Bowls, bowls, that's a load of bowls as well. Oh, I say. <laughs> oh, I say, young lady. Okay, then, Ian. All right, then. Thanks Speak for that. Again. Bye. There we go. Petrina, she says the army totally justified in opening fire on two jaw riders who shot through an army checkpoint in a stolen car. One of the guys who opened fire, one of the members of the parachute regiment, has been convicted of murder and has been sent to jail for life. Katrina says that's unfair. The rules of engagement are wrong. On this line here, we've got who we got. This is Jim. Good morning, Jim. Hello, Ian. Good morning. Do you agree with Katrina? I do. Yeah. Surely you just if you if you change the rules of engagement, then what you've got is a bunch of Rottweilers knocking around, isn't it? Yeah, I think they were they were obviously following their job description as such, and um, it's definitely like they're definitely justifying what they did because like if they start letting. One set of jaw riders through, as Katrina said, um, the IRA are going to get wise to it and start using that. And, like, it's going to scare off people from doing that again. So, hard but fair? Yeah. I mean, they, knew, they, I mean, they live in Northern Ireland, they obviously know the situation. How would you feel if, um, if jaw riders were shot here? I don't think it would be a bad thing, to be honest, but um, that's a bit radical, but... Well, yeah, because, I mean, car theft doesn't actually carry, yeah. carry the, life, uh, the death sentence as such. Well, if I killed, oh, there's a good chance if I would have killed somebody anyway. Wasn't but, there a better way of dealing with that situation? Well, I don't know. I, I think they, that's what they were told to do, shoot at anybody who comes through. And I think that... Um, I mean, but but that's, not, be, that's not the case, is it? I mean, they, they can only shoot if they believe their lives or the lives of the general public to be in immediate danger. You know, if someone's jumping through um, like an armed gate, like... Um, they obviously think that the only reason they're going to do that is to try and get bombs through and to endanger life. And they'll probably endanger life anyway by joyriding, but that's away from the subject, I know. Well, no, not really. Not really. So you, you think that simply by bursting through a barricade, through a checkpoint... A checkpoint which they obviously knew the, the reason why it was there in the first place. You are, by definition, a potential threat to life. Yeah, especially in like an area like Northern Ireland. Isn't that a bit like saying, you know, having a curfew, and half an hour before the curfew you shoot somebody, and the, the, the guy says, why, why did you shoot him? He said, well, I know where he lives, and he's going to make it home in half an hour. Isn't that a bit like that? No, I think, like, that's, they knew the situation in Northern Ireland, they know, they know why the army are there, you know. Why are the army there? Well, I don't know, to be honest. Like, um, so if you don't know, and I don't know, why, why should they know? Well, uh, well uh, that's not the point. I think, like, the foreign officers, they're there to do the job, and they were obviously told the job to do, and it was a decision they took. And, like, these people obviously broke the rules. These people, like, knew they had to stop. And they knew they'd probably get more trouble by jumping it than they would if they just stopped. So they should have just stopped, and anything that happened to them after jumping the, uh, 
the checkpoint is their own responsibility. I'm sure they don't need the risk to jump at the checkpoint. I'm sure, like, when nowadays they get slapped on the back of the hand for joyriding anyway, so um, I don't think they'd have been a lot better off if they'd have stopped. Okie dokie. Thanks for that, Jim. Pleasure. Cheers, mate. Bye-bye. Tara, 754 123 in Wolverhampton, 236 235 in Shrewsbury. It's the Midnight Line on Beacon and WABC talking about the soldier who's been sent to jail for life after shooting at a car which failed to shot, stop, shop, stop, I was close, when flagged down by a 17-man parachute regiment patrol. They said stop, the car didn't, the paras opened fire, the fourth shot was the lethal shot apparently. Court listened to the case and said it was murder, sent them to, sent them to jail for life, or one guy for life. Is that fair? You could argue that they were doing the job, you could argue that they were doing the job very badly. They ignored the rules of engagement and the jail sentence is perfectly and utterly just. What do you think? 754-123 in Wolverhampton, 236-235 in Shrewsbury. We'll be back to the lines after one of my favourite commercial breaks. Hello, I wonder if you can help me. Of course I can, Sugarlump. What's the problem? Well, it's my husband. The swine. No, no, is he has the car all day, which means I can't get about. What I really need is a good, reasonably priced car to run around. Well, you've come to the right place because I know that Evans Halshore have a terrific selection of runabouts. Prices start from just over £1,000 and they're ideal to get you from A to B. Oh, thank you. My pleasure, Sugarlump. Runabouts are at Evans Halshore, King Street, Dudley and Hagley Road, Hale Zone. And remember, runabouts from just £1,000. Oh, Anthony, that was four acid milk. Oh, Cleopatra, what is this thing between us? The Vernon Tuttle River. No, I mean... Oh, never mind. I ordered it from Norton Kane's Builders Merchants in Cannock. Vernon Tuck bathrooms are of the highest quality. Are handmade, come with a complete range of coordinated design accessories and a 25-year guarantee. Norton Kane's Builders Merchants offer the best deal on Vernon Tuck bathrooms, can arrange installations and offer a full design service. There's even finance available, written details on request. Why not visit their newly refurbished showroom at Warsaw Road, Norton Kane's Cannock? Telephone 0543270800. Norton Kane Builders Merchants. I just might... Mm, is the you lock up in the soap included in the deal? No, I got him at the car boot head in Rome. He's a bit slow. We call him the dope with the soap. The Weekend Breakfast Show is brought to you by Walton of Stafford. 0785 661293. Make it your first call for everything Vauxhall. Midnight Line on Beacon and WABC. We're talking about the para who's been sent to jail for life. Why? Because a 17-man parachute regiment patrol said um, stop to a car. The car didn't stop. They opened fire. They killed a teenager. Well, was it the teenager's fault for not stopping? Or was it the parachute regiment's? fault for not accurately following the rules of engagement. The court decided the latter, the para sent to prison for life. Is that fur? James, is that fur? Not that I can pronounce fur, you understand, because I'm from Liverpool, but anyway, it's as close as you're going to get. James. Hello. Hello. Dennis. Dennis, sorry, Dennis. Yes. Dennis, Dennis, Dennis. Yes, of course. Sorry about that. That's okay. Right then, Dennis, is that fur? Yes, sorry. Is it fur? Is it? Fur, F-A-I-R. Is it fur? Mm. No, I don't think so. It's, it's dodgy. For the simple reason, my honest opinion, the Padders have got a bad name in Northern Ireland, but what happened was the joyriders took a risk and they ended up on the wrong side. I mean, the, the tension that those lads are under it's nobody's business. They got a Northern Ireland, you're not fighting black or white, you're fighting, but you don't know what you're doing. You can't see the enemy. You can't see the enemy. There's people who speak to you, make you be friends with you, and it's they want to stab you. I mean, you're in uniform, but as I said, the patterns have got a bad name. And I think what's happening now is these lads, what's happened, it was unfortunate. But this lad, who's been, he's got a life sentence. He may, he may have gone over the top. 
shot, but he's doing his job. And the jury really should know it. I mean, it's same in this country. If you do something wrong, if you're drinking and driving, you get caught, why cry about it after? But it's there, it's the law. And the law in Northern Ireland is, if you're in an area which is a high-risk area, and there's, there's patrols, and you go past them and you don't stop, why shouldn't they shoot? It's their lives. It's innocent people's lives but that, that they're that, trying to save. That's exactly it. They can, they are allowed to shoot if they believe life to be in danger. Well, I should think so. If you say to somebody, stop, they don't stop, so what do you do? But that's shoot. not li that's not life endangering, is it, if somebody doesn't stop? Well, why shouldn't they stop if they've done nothing wrong? If they're doing something wrong, I mean, if it's only a, a jail sentence they're going to get, for uh, taking and driving away, joyriding, as they call it, I mean, it's easier than getting shot. I mean, if you, if you go through um, an army, or if you go, to, and if you go, if you go through a, a barrier where you're required to stop, if you go through it, what do you expect to happen? You expect to get chased. Even the, the police in this country now, apparently, we, they cannot give chase to a person who's stolen a car for the simple reason they might kill somebody who is completely innocent. It's complete risk, so we, we've got to give way either way, I think. And I think they're making an example out of the particular soldier because it's the Paris. And Just because it's the Paris? If it had been yes, any other regiment? It wouldn't be as bad, I don't think so. Because if it had been the Marines, no, no problem? No, the Paris have got a bad name in Northern Ireland, which has been proved. By, but I mean, it's, that's not neither here nor there, I don't think so, but the Paris have got a bad name, and I, I can't say any more, but I, the Paris have got a bad name, and... The, you, you, you believe they've been singled out because of the regiment? Yes, because and of the because regiment. of the regiment's history, its involvement with um, yes, Bloody well, Sunday? That's quite correct. I think this is it. It's to appease some of the people. Okie dokie. Thanks for that, Dennis. Okay. Cheers, mate. Bye. Ta ra. 754-123 in Wolverhampton, 236-235 in Shrewsbury, Midnight Line on Beacon and WABC. Talking about the member of the Parachute Regiment sent to prison for life for the murder of a joyrider. The joyrider crashed through a checkpoint in a stolen car didn't stop the member of the parachute regiment opened fire the rest unfortunately is history and he's in jail for doing it uh, right we got uh, James nice good morning except not on that line we don't we got him on this line morning James morning good morning how are you I'm alright thank you good well I think this is an absolute tragedy in both cases uh, first of all while I feel a great deal of sympathy for the two young people's families, etc., at the end of the day, I think it is absolutely ridiculous that a man of the armed services who's over there to protect the people of Ireland has been sent to prison for life. I, I think that is almost criminal. When one considers that uh, the IRA don't have a uniform as such, you don't know who, and there's a checkpoint there, and you're required to stop at that checkpoint. And if you don't, what is the first thing in their thoughts? You say the idea is to protect the community. If somebody goes through that checkpoint, they're obviously a danger to the community. And I will say this, that I don't know if you recall a terrible scene. When we talk about justice, when we talk about the terrible scene going back a few years, when unfortunately two servicemen who interrupted a funeral and were taken from that funeral, were stripped, were murdered in front of cameras, etc., etc. Now I'll go a stage further. Servicemen spend six months in Ireland and their nerves are always on edge. They don't know who the IRA is. And basically, I have a nephew who did, who did two tours of duty in Northern Ireland. And when he came back, uh, after his second tour, he tried to commit suicide. He was in a mental hospital. Thank God that he's now, he's recovered. He works in the prison service, not Group 4, I might add. Works in the prison service. But I don't see how any judge can send a member of the armed forces who's out there protecting the people in Ireland to prison 
for somebody who's broken the, the rules by going through a checkpoint. But then you, he... see, you see, you say break the rules. Why? Let, let's, let's have a look and say, why should an Irish Republican recognise a British checkpoint? Well, everybody should recognise. There don't have to be any particular breed. Would you, would you recognise a, a French checkpoint outside? Of course I would. If there's a checkpoint and I'm required to stop, I'll stop. I can honestly tell you, I spent a year out in Kenya, and I came to a checkpoint on the on the edge of uh, the Congo, and I stopped at that checkpoint because if I didn't, there was a machine gun post at the other side who would have quickly stopped me. And that's what I'm saying. If there's a checkpoint, and the rule is that you stop, you stop. If you don't stop, you've got something to hide. Or people think you've got something to hide, or you're up to no good. Well, you don't get shot for that, do you? And why not? Oh, so I, why did you shoot him? Well, I thought he might be up to no good. Well, the point is, if you don't stop at a checkpoint where you're required to stop, you're obviously up to no good. Required to stop Why don't you be by the ring? Required to stop by who? Sorry? Required to stop by who? Whoever's in control of the checkpoint. Whoever's got the gun. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, we So on that basis, if, if uh, an illegal barricade was put up, as has, as has happened in the past, in the Falls Road, uh, by, by mass gunmen, and you didn't stop, and they shot you, that's okay. But, you, no, that isn't the point. That's ridiculous, no, it Ian. No, it, it isn't. It is ridiculous. You've got an official army checkpoint here. All right, your t you're saying to me is that basically that these two young people who were joyriders, now they know that they shouldn't have stolen the car or whatever. And at the end of the day, to go through an army checkpoint, which is ob an obvious army checkpoint, and if it was an illegal checkpoint, let me tell you, they would... Sorry? I didn't say a word. They, they, no, no. They were asked to stop. They were asked to stop. And they did not stop. And they paid with their lives for that? Yes, entirely. Who's because to they say that that wasn't two of the top IRA, man? What identification did they... But we they don't... were genuine people... When did, since when did we have a shoot-on-site policy? Well, that's... It's not the Wild West. It's not a shoot on sight policy. But you said, the, what if it had been two uh, top IRA men? What, what difference would that have made? What I'm, what I'm trying to get over to you is this that we don't have a shoot on sight policy and never have had a shoot on sight policy. But where you have a restricted area or where there's a checkpoint, that's not a shoot on sight policy. That it, that it is up to the people who is coming to that checkpoint to stop and explain and give their identification. I don't think that's unreasonable. OK, well, listen, um, would you just answer these following questions? Yeah. Right? Are the parachute regiment amongst the elite in frontline troops in the entire world? Yes. Right? Are they one of the hardest units in the entire world? Yeah. Are they the, one of the most aggressive units? in the entire world? I would say yes. Then what the hell are they doing in Belfast? Because they've been posted there. They well, didn't exactly, choose to go there. Exactly. What are the parachute regiment, what are the Marines doing in Belfast policing a civilian population? Well, I mean, that's, that is... That that, is I, I agree. That is not nothing their to, choice. I, uh, yeah, They've I accept been posted that. there, full stop. So isn't this the government being a bit heavy-handed? Well, I can't comment on the government. I'm talking about this particular case. What I am saying, I'm talking about troops, whether it, it, it be is, the parachute it, regiment... It is related. ...or whoever. It is one thing clearing an Argentinian trench with hand-to-hand -hand fighting and with hand grenades. It is another policing a civilian population. Well, we're talking about Ireland. We're talking about a particular situation. I'm talking about a particular situation, whether it be the parachute regiment, the Cheshire's, the Marie, whoever. What I'm saying is, it's a hard. If you see a barrier, uh, which is manned by whoever, and you're required to stop, and you don't stop, you go through that barrier. Then I think you take your life into your own bloody hands. Okay, then, James. 
Right. Interesting to talk about it with you. Thank you. Ta-ra. All the best. Go and, have a, go and have a cup of hot cocoa. Go on, uh, calm down. No, I don't. Calm no, down, no. James. I'm perfectly fine, actually. I'm looking forward to the next season. All right, mate. Right. in the Premier League. I look forward to thumping Cheers. at Anfield. You'll have no chance. <laughs> we'll see about that. Bye. Ta-ra. There we go. James on Beacon and WABC. He says that if you see a checkpoint and you don't stop... And you get shot, it's your own fault. 754-123 and Wolverhampton, 236-235 in Shrewsbury. It's the Midnight Line on Beacon and WABC. And we'll be back to the lines after this. Now that summer's here, the monorail at the Merry Hill have put on a very special offer. Buy one ticket and get one free. So forget the hassles of parking at the Merry Hill Centre, park at the Waterfront East Station and experience the monorail. There's always something going on. Kids' attractions like the shoot people are often there. So use the thousands of free car parking at the Waterfront and treat the kids. Experience the monorail. Desperate! Following their massive 10-day sale events, Alshaw desperately need to replenish their used car stocks. They'll pay top prices and if the car is right, they'll even settle outstanding finance. Hi, Steve. Good day at work. That journey, it drives me round the bend, bumper to bumper, choked by fumes, nowhere to park, then there's traffic wardens, fines, wheel clamps. I've told you before, go buy a bus with West Midlands Travel. They take the hassle out of travel for a million people every day, and it's cheaper. Catch a bus? Why not? WMT run more services than anyone else all over the West Midlands, in the morning, at night, over the weekend, as well as all day. Hmm. West Midlands Travel. I'll give it a try. West Midlands Travel. Don't drive yourself round the bend. Take the bus. Score a bargain at the new Sunday market at Walsall Football Club's Biscuit Stadium. There's hundreds of bargains at unbeatable market prices with all new goods guaranteed. Don't miss the Sunday market at Walsall Football Club's Biscuit Stadium. Just off Junction 9 of the M6. Open this and every Sunday from 10 till 4, with plenty of free parking. Don't miss it. This is a story about breakfast to go with music. Each instrument represents a different item on the menu. Hash browns, the oboes, hot cakes and sausage, the clarinets, a bacon and egg McMuffin, the horns. Scrambled eggs and English muffin, violas and cellos. And last but not least, a big breakfast on the kettle drums. One day, a lot of people were going to work. And they said, hang on a minute, I feel like breakfast. And since there's nothing quite like a McDonald's, they all went to McDonald's and had a jolly good one. Midnight Line on Beacon and WABC, we are asking the question this morning, is it fair that a para is starting a life sentence for the murder of a joyrider. The joyriders failed to stop at a checkpoint and got shot as a result of it. I'm trying to get Dave back on the lines because he's next para. Oh, Dave, you're going to have to give us a call back, mate. That number doesn't work. Who have we got next? On this line here, we got Audrey. Good morning. Hi. Hello, Audrey. Hi, how are you? I'm all right. I'm just ringing up to say that I'm actually an Irish person from Southern Ireland, living in England. And whereabouts would that be then? I'm living in Oswestry. No, Scotland. from Ireland. Which bit of the Ireland? Oh, part of Ireland, County Mees, just north of Dublin. Oh, right. I was over there about a month ago, two months ago. All right. Drinking to Guinness. Why is it Guinness tastes better in Southern Ireland than it does here? Well, it's just because the Irish are wonderful, basically. Mm, I go along we with that. We just know how to make it properly. Yes, I, yes, I definitely would go along with that. <laughs> Okay, well, is it is it right that uh, the para is, is serving life? I just, uh, no, I don't think it's right. I think if those people, if those joy riders were Irish, which I presume they were, either southern or northern, that they should have known better than to drive through that checkpoint because I've driven through that checkpoint plenty of times and you just don't make any mistakes, basically. The paras are under enough pressure and one false move is enough to turn them round and shoot. It's it's just 
I don't think it's fair that that para should be serving life sentence because of this. You just don't joyride in, in that sort of an area. It's just not suitable. But they did. They did, and they were wrong. They paid with their lives, though. They paid with their well, lives, but they should have... They've lived there for the last... What age were they? 17, 18? They've lived there for the, those last years, and they should know better with the situation in Northern Ireland than to do that. But presumably... The, the para who has been sent to jail for murder ignored the rules of engagement. I.e.? You can't shoot unless you believe your life or the life of the civilian population to be in immediate danger. But when you look at it, how many lorries have, or cars have driven through that place with bombs on board? If you've been trained the way the paras have been trained and you've been sent to Northern Ireland, you're different to any other soldier in the whole of the world. It's just a totally different experience. And they are trained like, it's, the pressure on them is unbelievable. The break of a twig could be enough to turn them, which is wrong, but it just, it simply happens. They happen to be the people who are the, basically hated by the IRA and such likes. And they've got to, they have that pressure on them. And if somebody is stupid enough to joyride through a checkpoint within Maybe not, they don't deserve to lose their lives, but they deserve a good bollocking, basically. Which, they certainly got that. Well, they did. And that is what they deserved, because with the situation between the north and south of Ireland, you just don't make those mistakes. But you said, you said that the, the snapping of a twig could be enough to, to turn a soldier over the top and for him to open fire. Yes. That surely can't be right. Well, that I mean, happens. no, I accept it. I accept what you're saying may be right, but surely that that's a terrible situation. But that happens to be the way the situation has developed, and it can't be changed. It I've can't be changed. I've seen those 17, 18 year old soldiers standing on the border. I've driven past them with them pointing machine guns on me. They hardly deserve to have a driving license, let alone a license for a machine gun. They're terrified, basically. I've got friends in the army that are there in the British army. And they are terrified, but that's the way it is in Northern Ireland. And you just don't, a civilian doesn't make the mistake of going up and playing a prank on the border, which is what basically joyriding is. They played a prank and they suffered for it. Maybe they shouldn't have lost their lives, but they deserve something. Because you, they should have known better. They were very immature if they decided they should, could just joyride past the checkpoint. Okie doke. And the, the Tom that's been sent to prison? Well, I don't think he should have been. Well, I don't know, that's the way the army goes. He, he's got, they claimed he murdered someone, but the person he murdered, oh. maybe he didn't deserve murder, but he deserved something. Are we, are we expecting to, uh, a standard of, of service from the troops in Northern Ireland that just can't be achieved? Not under that pressure? Well, yeah, I think so. I just feel... I just want the English and the British to realise that it's the minority in Ireland that support the IRA and such like. Most definitely. I, I was over, last time I was over there was at the weekend of the Warrington bombing. Yes. And I got nothing but uh, shame yes. from, from the Irish people. From, from the rank and file Irishman that you met in the pub. Uh huh. And nothing but disgust. Yeah. And well, certainly, that's exactly certainly, how I felt. I've certainly never, no solidarity at all. The Warrington bombings just really made me realise I've always been against the IRA and always will be. I'm afraid, I'm, I am, I'm not afraid, I'm definitely not a supporter of them and totally disagree. And I'd just like to say they are not the Irish Republican Army, they are a terrorist gang. And the Irish P Republican Army is something totally different. They are just a normal army. Most definitely, if you, if you look at the, well, yeah, I mean, it, but if you look at, if you go back to the Easter uprisings and so forth, yes. um, you, I think you have to draw a distinction between the boys from the old brigade, who were the, the guys who came down from the farms armed with big sticks and yes. took on the British army, uh -huh. against this bunch of thugs. Yes, there's a big difference. There is a massive difference. It is no longer the same war being fought. No, no. I mean, if you if you uh, if you drive around Southern Ireland, you you'll find a lot of um, uh, monuments, which first of all shocked me, because there were monuments to the IRA, and I thought this is weird. I mean, you can't do this. And then it was explained to me that these were actually monuments to the boys from the old brigade. Exactly, and it is. It is definitely the minority that support the IRA, and especially per day, it's getting less in that minority, because the more they do, the less supported they are. 
and I've witnessed things against them, like people just, they're just not supported really anymore, but the problem is the fear of the Irish to go against them, because as soon as you go against them, they come back, they find you and come back to you. So that is why you still have got the IRA. There are, I'd say the minority of the members of the IRA are people who are afraid to leave, because as soon as you try to leave or you inform something, they turn against you and you're gone. So it's an organisation based on terror? It is, and they're actually the people in terror, not the rest of the world. So it's based on terror inside and out? Inside and out, yes. Okie dokie, listen Audrey, nice to speak to you. All right then. And do give us another go sometime. Okay. Speak to you soon. Bye now. Ta-ra. 754 123 in Wolverhampton, 236 235 in Shrewsbury. If you're Dave and you're trying to get through at the moment, don't worry about it because I've, I've sorted out what was wrong with your number. See? And I did a phone call at the same time. And because you're trying to get through, that's your phone at the moment, as it sounds. But just put your phone down, I'll give you a call back. On this line here, we've got, with the most famous catchphrase in the West Midlands and Shropshire, it's Eric. Give us an E, give us an R, give us an I, give us um, um, a K or, or a C, depending on how he spells it. Come on, Eric, I can't keep this up on that. You can't buy catchphrases like this. Mr. Eric! Hello. You've kicked your phone out the socket, Eric. Good morning. Ian. Eric. Well, thanks a lot. It's easy for you to say. Good morning. Good morning, Eric. Let's turn this thing down here. You yeah? turn that thing down there. And then, my, you know, sooner or later, maybe you'd like to talk to us. I realise it's a lot to ask. Have you been eating a lot of beans? Oh, uh, Ian. Eric. First, I, I offer my sympathy to them teenagers' parents, admit. But... In the paratroopers, they are taught to kill. They are taught to, kill. to give a call out. Halt. You don't halt, then you open up. Now, I'll tell you for one instance, and this wasn't paratroopers. During the war, after I'd finished work, I went with a chap on a wagon to take a load of slack into Donington. And we was going down the road into Donington, and there was a sentry box on the side. We didn't see him, and we didn't see the, the sentry at all. We went sogging on. The next minute we heard someone go such a bang. He stopped, he got out, they'd shot his tire. He said, what are you playing at? He said, didn't you hear us shout halt? He says, no. He said, I never said you. He said, you had the word twice, he said the third time we fired. But he didn't hear it? But the lorry driver never heard it. Well, he said, you unbossed it and you opened chains of the tire on it. Because I am, he said, in the lorry and the shift in there with the load on until it is changed. Now he wouldn't have changed it. The army had to change it. But that's beyond the point. That's gone by. This... No, I, think, thing, I think it's a good point, Eric. Yeah. This teenagers... You see, they come to a checkpoint, Ian. Them soldiers uh, challenged them. But I think... Where the mistake was made, them soldiers, they should not have shot for the joyriders. They should have shot for the tyres. But presumably, once you've taken the decision to open fire, you don't shoot... To, well, you do, you shoot to immobilise, but the best way to immobilise is, is to kill somebody. I mean, you but can't... They must somebody who's not, dead can't shoot you, can they? Yeah. They were... They must know themselves that they was taking a risk with paratroopers. And I think 
the reason that soldier got life as didn't help him at all was the police that give evidence that uh, this soldier asked them to cover up for him and uh, he apparently seen this young soldier being done over by his paratroop mates that's right, they, they said that the... And they wanted to make out the car, is it, him? That's right, a leg injury was inflicted yeah. uh, by, on one of the soldiers by others to bolster the story that they'd been hit by the joyriders. That's it. Well, that policeman didn't, uh, didn't stick with them. He gave the, he gave the evidence, as he should have given, as he gave the evidence as, 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 uh, against this soldier. If he'd have gone along with the soldiers, would it have made a difference, do you think, Eric? I think it would. I don't think it done wrong. Well, that's correct. That's that's what happened, and that's what they, that's what, according to the statement that I can make out by radio and on uh, television, that's what happened. That this policeman should, uh, they asked him to cover up for them, and this um, soldier was done over by his own comrades. And they wanted to make out the car had hit him, which was false evidence. But if in the, the forces here, whether it's paratroopers, whether it's Royal Marines, whether it's the army of any army of, of British forces, he's supposed to shout all three times. And if they don't halt, then he can shoot. Right? I'm not sure those are the rules of engagement, but anyway... They are. Are they? Yeah. Yeah. So, shout halt three times, and if you don't, you can... He shouts halt shot. twice, and on the third time, if they don't halt, when, uh, don't halt, he can open fire. I don't say he can shoot him dead, but he can open fire. Is there any point in shooting somebody unless you're going to shoot them dead? Well, yeah, there is. I mean, if, if he... Uh, you get somebody going by and he shouts halt um, that bloke going by could be a deaf and dumb bloke couldn't he i suppose so yes in which case you'd have to hold a sign so, up as well wouldn't you he wouldn't have take a risk in running up to him and asking him where he's going would he so he, he'd probably leg him yeah, you say, well, okay, okay then. So, do you believe that the guy shouldn't have gone to jail for 15 years? No, I don't believe that that guy should have gone to 15 years uh, but in he jail. But he should have gone to jail? He should have done the same as the other if he'd have only had three or four years. That would have been different. But to give a soldier 15 years for doing his duty, I mean, I reckon myself... That's a disgrace on the British Army. Don't, you don't believe that there was a little element of, right, let's get Paddy? No, I don't. I think myself, what it was, they, offered, they flagged them down and they just shot through the checkpoint. Okay, and I reckon on the spare of the moment, that soldier shot. Okie doke then, Eric. Okay. Thanks for that. Cheers, Ian. Good night. There we go, Eric on Beacon and WABC voicing his opinion, and that's what we're after on the Midnight Line at Beacon and WABC, your opinion. This morning we're asking for your opinion on the member of the Parachute Regiment who's been convicted of murdering a young joyrider in Belfast. We've got Dave on this line. Good morning, Dave. Morning, Ed. Good morning. Oh. Now, you were a Tom, were you? Yes, two para. Aha. Four twos of Ireland. That's OK. Um, no, the, the reason that, that I asked you is, um, you said two para, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah, you see, if somebody's lying to you, they'll say second. No, two. That's, second's a sexual position, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. yeah, so I've heard. <laughs> yeah, me too, I've never actually done sex, <laughs> you know, living hope. Yeah. So you, you've done four tours of Ireland. Four tours. It was, uh, I think Eric probably had a rather romanticised view yes, of Yes, he did. Hold, the rules of engagement that he gave you are wrong, you see. That, uh, I mean, whether it's the paras, uh, artillery, every regiment that serves out there, you have to carry two cards with you at all times. And uh, a blue card and a yellow card, and you're supposed to obey these at all times. All tour on fire, all tour on fire, all tour ready on fire, and then you fire. 
Right, well, the, but, e explain, uh, explain the card system. Um, well, these cards are rules that you, you, you well, it's that you have to abide by. But uh, if the circumstances came up, you wouldn't. No way would you abide so, by So, are you, are you meant to actually wave the cards? <laughs> no. You, uh, the, you're given instructions on these cards for engagement. And, um, these two guys, it, it's beyond me how, how it ever got to court. It really is. I mean, the fourth tour, I lost two friends, D by P, I bought myself out. <clears throat> Not just because of that, but that had something to do with it. But uh, in that circumstances, you wouldn't have, you wouldn't have shouted anything. I mean, protecting... Uh, the, the public or whatever. If that, if that car that drove through the barrier was loaded with a 500 pound bomb that was going to be parked somewhere and blow innocent people away, women, children, men, as it happens over here, then why give them the benefit of the doubt? Is that what you would assume? That, well, that if a car didn't stop? But you have to. You have to. Yeah, I, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not saying that uh, whether that it's right or wrong to assume. I'm saying, is that what... It, suppose you'd be manning a checkpoint, yeah. right? And something yeah. goes... So, you, you, and that car went through. It goes through. What's going through your head now? It's, it's going to be stopped. It would be stopped. It would be stopped. I mean, I was a, a full-screw corporal, call it what you want. I, had, I was in charge of half a section, and as I say, we had a bit of trouble and lost two guys. That car would have been stopped. There's no two ways about it. Uh, right, wrong, you, you see, I mean, I can say it now I'm out, I mean, you do something good out there, and the army, my God, you're a hero. You do something that's not on your cards, or against the rules, even though they would have done the same, you're caught, and you, there's no one with you. You're on your own? Correct. And that's the truth. Whether it's an accidental discharge, whatever, in your court. I mean, you get an accidental discharge, you let a, uh, a round off by mistake. You're fine the first time. The next time, if you did it twice, you get 28 days jail. And Is, is the parachute regiment the right lot to be out there, do But the thing, I mean, whether it's the parachute regiment or whatever regiment is serving out there, you're under the same rules. You all carry the same cards. You're all patrolling, you're all doing mobiles under the same instructions. Not that we're too heavy, or how we were trained to be. I mean... Would, would you have shot? Yes. And did. And did? And did. With the same con well, obviously not the same consequences unless you got a, no, a phone no, in your cell. No, not the phone. What, what, what were the circumstances? Uh, it was um, what you call a contact. W rounds were fired, returned fire. I'm right, so you had a positive. Unfortunately, nobody found. You had a positive contact. Yeah, plenty, plenty. This the last Sniper. time I served was in the seventies, late seventies. I mean. You can say there was more trouble then, or there was more incidents, but you'd, a lot is not reported of, about what happens over there, believe me. Oh, Truthfully. I can believe that, because you, you're only, uh, as far as events over but, there go, you're only as educated I mean, as what I, you read in the control press. I went down to Long Cash when riots started, and then the younger strikers was out there, Bobby Sands, and these people. And all propaganda came into it that uh, hunger strike, all this, that, and the other. Bobby Sands had 40, whatever it was, murders down to him. And he was given all this publicity, the IRA, and all. He'd have got no bloody water, I don't know about food and his family beside him. That's what he deserved. That's what they all deserved. But when an IRA bloke died, I mean, he's a martyr now. They made him a martyr. But when a bomb is planted and you get 40 children, 
women, innocent people killed or whatever. It's just pushed off. But you get two IRA guys ambushed and mown down as they should be, and there's uproar. Why? Okay, dokie, just hold on there. Uh, we'll be back to you in a few moments. 754 123 Wolverhampton, 236 235 in Shrewsbury. If you want to add your comments to the Midnight Line on Beacon and WABC. Beacon Radio News. The one o'clock news. This is David Kermode. The Prime Minister will this weekend be gauging the reaction to his keynote speech at the Tory Women's Conference, where he declared he's staying put as party leader. As he does so, he faces a difficult week ahead at Westminster. Des Fahey reports. John Major's troubles start on Monday when the Maastricht Bill begins two days of debate in the Lords with 130 peers already signed up to speak. Arch critics of his European policy will be led by Baroness Thatcher, who speaks on Monday, and Lord Tevitt on Tuesday. On Wednesday, the opposition is planning a state of the economy debate to be opened by the Labour leader John Smith, which will call for a response from the Prime Minister. It will also give Norman Lamont a chance to put his version of events in the months leading up to his sacking. Des Fahey, IRN, Westminster. The United Nations Security Council has voted to deploy 5,000 troops to protect Muslims in Bosnia. The force will guard six new safe havens. From New York, Paul Woodley reports. The UN says before troops can be moved in, there must be an overall ceasefire in the surrounding regions, and that doesn't look likely. Bosnia's UN ambassador, Mohamed Shakabi, said the safe haven's idea is just an attempt to cover up the Security Council's inability to implement the Vanso in peace plan. What you're doing is creating uh, ethnic ghettos, which will uh, be like mini Gaza strips for an indefinite period of time. The resolution allows for tougher measures if the Bosnian Serbs don't cooperate, but diplomats say there's little support at the UN for anything further. Paul Woodley, IRN, New York. The husband of murder victim Tracy Cowley has disappeared. Police say they're concerned for 29-year-old Simon Cowley's welfare and they're stressing they don't want to question him. Tracy, who had a baby daughter, was found strangled beside a busy roundabout at Cannock in Staffordshire on Thursday. Two teenagers are being treated in hospital after triggering a booby trap linking a shotgun to a tripwire. The 13-year-olds have undergone minor surgery to remove pieces of glass and plastic which were packed into a cartridge. The device went off as the boys crept into an empty house at Goldthorpe in South Yorkshire. Independent Radio News. The weather, presented by Safeway Windows, Doors and Conservatories. Oxford Street, Bilston. 49049 Bilston, 4909. Moderate overnight, well actually very dry overnight with broken cloud, the low 1 Celsius, the 11 Celsius, 52 degrees Fahrenheit. Pollen count's moderate, it is expected to rise. We're the first with the pollen count each morning at 6. Later today, small chance of drizzle at first, but long sunny periods in the late morning and afternoon with a high of 20 Celsius, that's 68 degrees Fahrenheit. The outlook for Sunday, warm with long sunny periods. And Monday is going to be much the same. Temperature now, 11 Celsius, 52 degrees Fahrenheit. <laughs> Hold on, we've just taken a number. Say that again. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we'll call you back. Cheers. There you go, you see. Because we call you back to save your bill because we're kind people here at Beacon and WABC. We were talking to Dave before we went to the news. Morning, Dave. Morning, morning. Good morning. Now, you said you've been in a position where you uh, you returned fire. Yeah. Was, was there any real difference in between you returning the fire and the patrol here that returned the fire? No. No, not at all. Although there was no weapons used that, that they fired upon the army checkpoint, you, you have to keep in mind what they are going on to do. When you say that it's been said earlier that the the public has to be protected and we are out there to keep the peace not create war that's what the army is there for i mean if you want to go back to it nine counties six counties whatever but what the, what they could have been going on to do whether there was weapons in that car whether there was a 500 pound bomb in the boot 
just to be planted somewhere indiscriminately. So if, if this soldier had opened fire, right? Yes. And the uh, the two teenagers had still been killed, but they'd opened the boot and they'd found a bomb in it, these, these guys would be heroes. Of course they would. Of course they would. Definitely. So are, are we asking the army to keep the peace with both hands tied behind it, the back? Th 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 that is it. That is exactly that. You've hit it right on the nail. You really have. I mean... It, it, it's an unreal situation that you're in. And your hands are tired. They really are tired. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you can't do right for doing wrong. You, you really can't. I mean, if you've got to keep... If a situation arises and you've got to keep checking yourself and think, is this right, is this right, is this right, and in the meantime you've got a bullet between the eyes, then what... How can you? How can you win? You can't, can you? Of course you can't. And I suppose what we're what we are asking is reflex action, but reflex Spare correct. Spare the moment things. I mean, we're acting, mistakes we're, are made. I'm not saying they're not mistakes. Was, was this a mistake? Made. Was I this don't a mistake? think it was a mistake. I really do not think that this was a mistake. You know, a car flashes through a checkpoint. I mean. Army checkpoint. I mean, the day-to-day -day things out there, it's nothing new. Everyone out there knows what they have to do when they come to an army checkpoint, VCPs or, or whatever. They know what they have to do. And if they went through it, you automatically have got to think that there's something wrong here. And act accordingly. Uh, exactly. Exactly. By immobilisation. Exactly. And the best way to immobilise somebody... Yep. OK, yep. listen, Dave, I've got to move on. Yep, fine. Nice to speak to you. Yeah, bye, mate. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Bye. bye. Here we go, Dave, an ex-para. He said, absolutely no mistake. No mistake at all. The, uh, the para who's been sent to jail shouldn't have been sent to jail because if he'd have opened fire and killed the two teenagers who'd hijacked the car, who'd nicked the car, if they'd opened the car boot and found a bomb in it, he'd have been a hero. He, he wouldn't be on his way to jail. He's actually already in jail and serving a life sentence. Who we got next? We've got Mark next. Good morning, Mark. Good morning. Well, I think that that gentleman just said it all. I think that it's, it's quite hard to expand on that because basically I think he encompassed everything I was going to say in that those men were just simply doing their job. No more, no less. And to put them in prison for doing their job is absolutely crazy. I don't understand how any court anywhere could possibly um, reach that conclusion. OK, well, they have reached that conclu conclusion. Yes. Why, why do you think they've reached it? There was a suggestion before that it was that the, the parachute regiment aren't the most popular Maybe. In, in Northern Ireland. Maybe. Be because of their uh, links with uh, Bloody Sunday. Possibly, but you see, it, what you've got to realise is that had they not stopped the vehicle and allowed the vehicle to go through, if those people driving the car had been terrorists and had left a bomb in some high street or some city centre and it had gone off and it had killed civilians, those men would then have been accused of letting the vehicle go through without trying to stop it. So in one sense, they're in, an, in a, a catch-22 situation, you know, um, they, they, they get blamed for firing on the vehicle, and yet they would have been blamed if the vehicle had gone through and um, had posed a risk to the public. So um, I don't know what the government expects of them half the time, whether they want them to, um, to do their job or not to do their job. But they can't have it both ways. I mean, it's stupid. It really is. Well, uh, they, they obviously expect them to conduct the duties according to the, the rules of engagement and they clearly feel that those rules of engagement have been breached. Well, this particular judge seems to feel that, but... Um, well, no, because it would be a jury, wouldn't it? Well, yes, it was a jury, but juries aren't always totally unbiased, are they, despite what we're led to believe. I mean, um, what I would say to that is that the rules of engagement, um, surely they, they can't be pinned down to exact... Um, principles in, in that kind of situation. I mean, the, the soldiers have to act as they feel appropriate. I mean, we've got to trust them enough to, you know, trust them to make the right judgment. 
and in my opinion that, that they were in a situation where they had to act quickly they couldn't just sit around and think about it for half an hour you know I mean if they just sat about and thought what shall we do that van would have uh, or car would have disappeared over the horizon and they wouldn't have known what the hell it was going to end up doing you know I mean it would have been like um, uh, letting it through and not knowing um, what was going to happen maybe two or three hours from then, you know. Um, but then is, is it just, I mean, it obviously is, just hard luck on the soldier? Should it should have picked uh, somebody with a bomb in the boot to shoot? Well, that's right. Um, what I would also say is that, um, obviously, I feel desperately sorry for the parents of the, the teenagers who were killed, but as that gentleman just said, everybody knows um, what a checkpoint looks like and there's no one in Northern Ireland that's not aware of what they have to do when they approach a checkpoint. Should the rules of engagement be changed then? Well, maybe they should be relaxed a little so that the soldiers have more, um, shall we say, more freedom to act as they feel appropriate. I mean, surely we should trust them enough to, um, I mean, they are responsible for our protection ultimately and to to victimise them and to prosecute them and to treat them like criminals is, uh, well, it's max of treason as far as I'm concerned. I mean, it, it, it's like, um, it's almost like our judicial system being guilty of treason against uh, its own country, you know, for, for uh, sort of coming down on the men who were supposed to protect us. It's, um, it's, it's quite unbelievable. Um, I mean, I think whatever political persuasion you happen to be of, I think, um, you know, you would have to say that it's the most unusual case. I mean, I've never um, heard of anything quite like it before. But um, I, I certainly think that the sentences are ridiculous. I mean, as one person said before, I don't think it should even have come to court. You know, let alone um, let alone be left out to a jury. Makes you wonder, doesn't it, if the uh, if the counsel for the defence is is going to win the crappest barrister in the entire history of the legal profession award yeah I, how, how, do you, how do you lose that one I, I mean i just think that um i mean everybody who's been on tonight has, has echoed everything which i basically feel about it in that um they had no choice they were simply doing their job and anybody who tries to make them out to be criminals you know what they've got to ask themselves is what would they have done in that situation it's all right to look back in hindsight and say, you did this wrong, you did that wrong. But if they were in that situation, or you and I were in that situation, we would have probably done exactly the same thing. You know, because ultimately, we would have thought, well, it's our duty, we are employed to protect the public, and that is what we've got to do. And if that involves um, opening fire on this vehicle, then so be it. You know, I mean, sometimes hard decisions have got to be taken. You know, I mean, it's not a... It's not a situation where they can afford to just dither. You know, that, that's what I would say about it. See, in, in retrospect, you can say, oh, isn't it dreadful there were two teenagers? Yeah. But you don't know that at the time. Well, it's one person... You, you it's, see it as a car disappearing, going away from the... Uh, th those teenagers could have been... Um, could have been sent there by terrorists to plant bombs, for all we know. I mean, you know, they, they, we don't, they didn't know who the hell they were. They could have been... They could have been French, they could have been German, they could have been any nationality. Um, you know, it's impossible to tell, really. And um, it, it's up to the soldiers to act at, the, at, at that precise moment, which they did. Um, the, the, the fact that some court happens to feel it was the wrong decision um, is neither here nor there, in my opinion. They were just doing their job, you know. Although you obviously have to have safeguards against what constitutes um, a proper engagement and what doesn't. Otherwise, you could have troops opening fire for, you know, whenever they felt like it. Yes, of course. But um, in this particular case, it was an army checkpoint, you know, what they call a restricted area. And, I mean, they would have had to have been incredibly stupid not to have realised that they had to stop. Why do you think they were? Well, were they just incredibly stupid? Well, quite possibly, but, um, you know... Um, the, we, if, if everybody had to um, consider those people all the time, the country would be in a hell of a mess. I mean, um, hard decisions have to be taken. Um, they had to make a snap decision. And of course, really, when you think about it, um, the whole business of soldiering is, is surely to be able to make um, 
the right decision at the right time, you know. Um, and I mean, for, for ordinary civilians to sit by and uh, make judgments on professional soldiers is, is, is just ridiculous. But professional know? soldiers presumably shouldn't be above the law. Well, no, they shouldn't, but in this... And as the law stands at the moment... In this situation, I think that it was wrong, but it should have been made um, made into a court case because my interpretation of it is that they were simply doing their job. But isn't this... is, is this... Uh, I mean, a, a lot of people have said much the same thing tonight, but is this... Is this clouded? Are people's sort of perceptions of the situation clouded by the fact that the joyriders... And everybody thinks, well, that serves them right. Well, I don't really think so, actually. I mean, I think you've got to give people enough credit. I mean, whoever it had been, um, if they just blindly stormed through a checkpoint with no regard for authority, then they jolly well deserve what they get. You know, if, if they get shot, then, you know, it's their own tough luck. They should have had more sense in the first place. I really think that we are just too soft. We, we really are. We, we've got to accept that no, uh, certainly in the case of Northern Ireland, it's time to get tough now. Not, you know, it's about time that more steps were taken to protect civilians, not not to try and um, to try and judge these soldiers um, whether they've done right or wrong. We should actually be supporting them, not uh, not condemning them. You know. Okie dokie, listen, I'm going to move on, Mark. Okay. All right, thanks for your points. Okay. Cheers. Bye. 754 123 in Wolverhampton, 236 235 in Shrewsbury, Midnight Line on Beacon and WABC. We're talking about recent events in Northern Ireland where a member of the Parachute Regiment was convicted of murdering a young joyrider in Belfast. The patrol, 17 man patrol, opened fire on the car as it sped through the checkpoint. We're asking you your opinions on that. Is that British justice? 754 123 Wolverhampton, 236 235 in Shrewsbury. We'll be back to the lines. Who have we got next? We've got um, get Robert next. And we'll speak to Robert after we've had a track from our featured CD this morning. Just to show that there's absolutely no hard feelings at all. It's Norwegian group Aha. Sun always shines on TV.
Just to show there's absolutely no hard feelings at all, that's Norwegian group, uh, Aha, and Sun Always Shines on TV. There we go. I don't care if they beat us 2 0 earlier in the week. I don't care. Okay, next we've got on the Midnight Line at Beacon and WABC. Um, I want all this. Robert, he's on this line. Hello, Robert. Hello. Hello. All right. What are your opinions? Uh, I think he was right to do what he did. He was right? Yeah. I think he did, he did his duty. Then the end of the day. But he didn't do it according to the rules of engagement. Well, you know, I think they're there to, you know, protect the people. And for all you know, you know, could, they could have been uh, carrying anything through, a bomb or anything. So I think he, I think he did the right thing. But on, on that basis... Yeah. Um, you could shoot anybody, couldn't you? And just say, wow, well, you know, I didn't know what they were doing. I didn't know they weren't a terrorist. I mean, people are innocent until proven guilty. Well, at the end of the day, if, if, if you had to let the people go, and uh, an incident had happened in, uh, you know, somewhere in Ireland, you know, there's something wrong somewhere in there. That no matter which way you look at it, he couldn't win. Well, I, I think he was just doing his duty at the end of the day. You know, that, that's what they're for, to protect the Irish people. And how were they protecting them in, in this case? Well, they, by by removing what they saw as a potential threat. They were told to stop, and were well, they told to stop? As far as I'm not I, sure. I would assume so. I mean, the thing is, if you're going to go through a checkpoint, you either get waved on or not, don't you? Well, if they were told to stop and they didn't stop, you know, I mean, they, they could have been they could have been terrorists for anyone, couldn't they? And I, I feel he, he did the right thing, didn't they? I don't feel you know he, he did anything wrong, really, in shooting him. I, I think the the sentence is very harsh, really. Makes you, I, su I suppose, wonder how you can sort of do your duty like that, if you say you do your duty, and end up with a with a life sentence. But presumably he must have known he'd done wrong, otherwise they wouldn't have tried to cover it up by lying. Well, yeah. I suppose, yeah, that's a, that's a good point, though, really, Ian. Uh... But then is it is it that the rules of engagement are wrong? Uh, well, no, I don't, I don't think so, really. So the rules of engagement should stay the, the way they are? Yeah. If you get told to stop at a checkpoint and you don't, yeah, I'll, I'll, it's your own lookout what happens next. Well, yeah, really. I mean, that, that, at the end of the day, in Ireland, there's, you know, all the troubles been going on for 20, 20 years now, more than 20 years, and he can't carry on, can it really? I don't, I don't think he did anything wrong, really, shooting him. I mean, I feel sorry for him, like, you know, the parents of the people who died, but what can he do? You know, if he hadn't done it, they'd have got, you know, anything could happen, really, couldn't he? Okie dokie, thanks for that, mate. All right. Speak to you soon. Thanks a lot, Ian. Ta -ra. Ta -ra. There we go, let's speak to Cuckoo. Good morning. Hello there, Yogi Bear. Top of the morning to you. You all right? Congratulations on Nigel Clough. Did a good job there. What's happened? Good signing for Liverpool. Oh, he's signed for Liverpool, has he? <laughs> uh, anyway, I've got to uh, disagree with all your callers tonight. Uh, you know, listening to you, I believe that they did the right thing, giving him his 15 years. Uh, because we've got to get away from the fact everybody's got IRA on the brain here. Now, there were young kids, and they were in a car, all right, they broke the barrier, but they were going away. And you did say at the beginning of the programme, but when he fired, the, when they fired at him, uh, they fired through the back window. Now, why didn't they aim at the tyres? You know, I mean, this is a... Uh... Well, presumably, because once you've taken the decision to shoot, the last thing you want... Uh, if, you, if you've taken the decision to shoot, then you take the decision to immobilise, and the yeah. best way to immobilise is to shoot to kill. Yeah, well, you, did, you know, all right, they were highly trained soldiers, you know, and I, I believe that, uh, you know, they, because they, they said these young lads, you never know, they might have stuck their two fingers up to them or whatever. And I believe that, uh, you know, they were determined to stop them one way or another and uh, killed them, like, you know. But that's, you, you can't just stop them, can you? I mean, if you're going to take the decision that you open fire, yeah. you open fire to Correct. kill. But they were going away, weren't they? You did say they broke the barrier and were going away, weren't they? They were on the way out, yes. Yeah, on the way out. No, you know, to they me... Pose, they pose no immediate no threat. No immediate threat. I mean, this is, you know, everybody's overlooked this, you see. Uh, you know, I think they've overlooked it, and, uh, you know, they're making more of it of what there is, and um, the fact is, law's law. He killed them, you know, killed them lads, and uh, looking at it from the parents' point of view, it would be my kid or anything else, you know, I feel that, uh, you know, he shouldn't have uh, opened fire on the way out, on the way in, possibly. You know, I've got to say on the way in. If he'd have gone in... Uh, carried on going in, you know, I would have said yes, but not going out. You know, how do you feel about that? Do you feel that uh, I've got I, a right, you know, um, I think there? I think I think that you you do have a point that people tend to look at it through IRA tainted glasses. Yeah. That anything that that happens like that 
is, is coloured by the IRA's activities on the mainland. Yeah. And that people have less sympathy for no, for Northern Irish people than they would do for British people. Oh, it's not British people. Uh, sorry, whoops. Uh, then racism, for it, go on. No, I'm joking. No, go on. not racism. No, I'm joking. Um, than, than, say, mainland. Yeah. You know, no, if some, if something day. happens in Ireland, let's face it, if something happens in Ireland, if there's a bomb explosion in Northern Ireland, it might get to page 15, it might get to page yeah. 20. I mean, we're going back to these kids that stole the car, right? You know yourself, half the cars over there got no MOTs anyway, am I right? You know what I mean? I, they're I they're don't all know. bangers anyway, aren't they? Like, you know. I've never been um, to the what I've north. been told. I'll be honest, I haven't been over there, but uh, I do agree with, like, the corps who had been in the army that, um, you know, had it, had it been IRA, he would have been an hero. Right. But at the same time, they were only kids and they, they were driving away. And that's the main point, probably what the army have looked at. And you know yourself that if, if they'd have let the soldiers get away with that, then every time anybody went through the bloody barrier, they'd have shot everybody. And, a bit, and within six months, they'd have cleared the IR. There'd been nobody left in Ireland. You know. So where, where does that leave the soldiers now? Somebody suggested before that it leaves them too scared to, yeah. to open fire. Well... Once again, I've got to ask the question again, what you bought at the beginning of the programme. What are them highly trained soldiers doing in a, you know, a police area? You know, uh, you know, at the end of the day, like you say, all right, we know over here all this lot happened, didn't it? At Manchester and all over the place, IRA bombed, but they drove straight in. We didn't even have any guards on the gate, did we? You know what I mean? So, and then over here we've got the plastic bully. We don't have real ammunition. Uh, as you say, there is that question to be asked. But at the same time, we're looking at young lives here, what were killed, young kids, and uh, my sympathy goes with the family, I'm afraid, look. Okie dokie. Well, all the best, Cock, and uh, all the best for Liverpool, and uh, it was a smoking, you haven't mentioned it this week. Oh, um, okay, still You've off it. You've been in the toilet, have you? No, 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 <laughs> no, no, well, not for that, anyway. Right, anyway all the um, best for Liverpool, Nigel Clough, anyway. You're all very right. kind. Oh, uh, thank you for coming. Thank you for all having me. Bye. Uh, just to say, Jane Moses. Uh, you're right, yeah. So it's a, it's a letter I got. Sorry, it's a bit obscure, that. We'll read the letter out on Monday. Didn't have time to read letters this morning. OK, you're right. Uh, anyway, right, 754-123 in Wolverhampton, 236-235 in Shrewsbury. Next on the lines, we've got Ian. Good morning. Hello there, mate. Good morning. Now, Cuckoo there said that he agrees with the court. I heard it. I don't. Why not? They were only kids. They were only kids, but what they was doing... They're trying to taunt the squaddies on the, on the barrier. So if you taunt the army, they kill you? No, they don't taunt the army. Um, they know, look, I was across the house over there 20 years ago. Um, and they brought born and bred to it. They should have known better than to try and cross a checkpoint. But it's a bit much to pay for one single act of stupidity with your life, isn't it? Well... That's the risk to take, and that's, I'm afraid, how some of them are. Sorry, say that again? I'm afraid that's how some of them are. That they will just, they'll, they'll, they'll flirt with, uh... They will flirt with, they will flirt with death. I've been stoned by young kids over there. Stoned? Sorry, I thought you said stung, I don't know. No, stoned. Stoned, right. Yeah, and we used to throw the big spins on back. And, uh, it was just how they brought, it, brought up with it, some of them. Not all of them. 90% of them are brilliant people. But you do get the odd few, the odd 10%, who will go out and taunt the army and everything else and that. You can't blame the Scottish for that. What they try to do is one of those things. And that young lad who's in Nick now for life, right, for serving this bloody government, it's, it's not on. It was a reaction, though, wasn't it? It was the wrong reaction. I it mean, wasn't, you, you, it you, wasn't the wrong reaction. If, if I, I totally accept the point that if um, if they'd opened the boot up and found um, twenty pound of semitex, the guy would have been a hero. Oh, that's quite wrong. Yeah. Have as, you ever blown anybody it, up? Why to a fence? Have I ever what? Sorry. Blown anybody up? Why to a fence on, on a nunnery? Uh, no. I have. It's not very nice. No, I would imagine it isn't. No, it's not. Um, you know, this, this is the thing, you see. Um, they, you get a certain percentage of them who just try it on. Right, you know, I was across there, I was saving lives. Right, but you get these youngsters right, um, who were born
born into it, bred into it, and there's nothing we can do about it. So yeah. do, you, do, you ha do you then just have to accept that there will be casualties, there will be civilian casualties? There will casualties? be casualties, yes, until the government sorted it out. No, it started in 1968, 25 years ago. Well, th this particular batch did. Yeah, well, th this, this one did, yeah, it started in 1900s, didn't it? Well, Oliver Cromwell's got a lot to answer for. Yeah, and William of Orange, more than anybody else. And, um, until this government sorted it out, and, that, and now this government can let this poor young lad this British soldier served a life sentence. I don't know. Okie dokie. Thanks for that, Ian. We've got to move on because we've got to get everybody in. 754-123 in Wolverhampton, 236-235 in Shrewsbury if you want to make your point. We've got Audrey next. Good morning. Good morning, Audrey. All right, who's on this line then? If it isn't Audrey. Oh, are you talking to me? Well, you're called Audrey, aren't you? No, I'm not. I'm called Vera. Oh, why? Sorry. Whoops. Sorry. Whoa! Oh, smacks for me. Sure me that's smacks all. for me. That's who I meant, actually. Oh, well, it's That's who I meant. And there's a bit... You're called Audrey, aren't you? <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, dear. Lovely name, but not me. I've made a mistake there, Vera. <laughs> Good morning, Vera. Morning. Good, Good morning. morning. Yes, morning. I, I'm still not quite with the nighttime shift. Um, actually, I just wanted to really make a point about the soldiers themselves. I think you had a, a, a good point when you said that soldiers will begin to be uh, afraid to defend themselves uh, if this sort of thing happens. I mean, um, they, they're trained to be instinctively aware of danger. And uh, if a car is running from them and has broken a barrier, uh, there's danger. Someone is running away for a good reason. They're not to know that it's because they've stolen a car. Uh, they could be carrying a good deal of uh, very unpleasant uh, explosives. We had, uh, my husband was in the army and served in Ireland and in, in Aden. And in Aden, um, the mums used to send their children up to our soldiers with grenades under their clothes, with uh, instructions. This is two-year-olds and three-year-olds to drop the grenade by the soldiers' feet and run like hell. Um, well, you, know, you, you had evidence of this happening in Aden? Oh, in Aden, yes. I'm, I'm sure any, any soldier would tell you that this, this happened. Um, and the, the, <laughs> the local do-gooders in Aden created hell because uh, the men were shooing the women and children away from rubbish tips um, and setting fire to the rubbish, which the, the local women and children used to scour for food. Right on the surface, the, the men would have loved to have been able to give them the food. But if you're going to have a grenade dropped at your feet while they do it, um, you'd be a damn fool to, to chance it. Um, Ireland, yes, uh, my best friend's husband was killed in Ireland. And I've, I know lots of lovely Irish people. Um, but she was uh, uh, really treated badly. He went to... Um, he was in a bus station, and, uh, and a very heavily loaded vehicle, uh, obviously badly parked, was there, and he went to inspect it, found that uh, it was very suspicious, and began removing the, the surrounding people from the area. He must have saved many, many lives, but on his last trip back to the car, the car went off, and he went off with it. Um, his wife actually had to travel to Ireland for an Irish judge to decide what compensation should be given to her. And the judge actually said in, in the court, well, you're a very attractive woman, therefore we'll keep the compensation very low, we're sure a man will soon snap you up. Um, soldiers have it rough, and for people to tie their hands behind their back and say, you know, spit at the enemy is a bad thing. Although killing two joyriders isn't a particularly desirable state of events. No, it? it's, it's, it's very...